Hey guys, welcome to my channel. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about um, lipoma, uh, specifically uh, in my dog Charlie, who happens to be a golden retriever, and what I did for it. Um, so, some months ago, I took my dog into the vet, and he was, uh, he had gotten a full checkup, and he had a little lump on the side of his, uh, close to his back torso. And it was very small, it was nothing real significant. And the doctor said, well, yeah, this, this looks like the beginning stages of lipoma, but nothing to be concerned about. I thought, well, what, what is that? What does that mean? And, and um, I later learned that it was more of a fatty deposit beneath the skin. And so I thought to myself, well, I, I don't see it. It doesn't look prevalent. It's not real big. I'm not going to worry about it right now. And then some time later, um, that bump that started out very small ended up becoming very big. I mean, it was, I don't know, it was protruding from his, from his skin. I mean, it seemed like an inch above his skin or more. And so it was, it was fairly big. And I thought, well, you know, what do I do now? What do I, do I go back to the vet and, and have them surgically remove it? it, it can it get worse? Again, I, I was uneducated by this whole lipoma thing and I was worried about it. And so my doctor said, well, you know, you know, after taking him to go see the doctor, again, they said that it was uh, nothing to be concerned about, but that they could remove it. And however, if, they, if the doctor were to remove it, it doesn't mean it wouldn't grow back in the same spot or in the same area. And he could potentially get lipoma in other areas in his body. And, and apparently this is a common thing in dogs. Like I, I, did, I had, most of my life I had mixed breeds, never had a full breed uh, um, golden retriever. So to see this, it just wasn't normal for me. And, and, and I thought, well, yeah, I want it removed. I mean, for his health and, and because it's unsightly, right? And I guess it can grow all over a dog too. So, so then I thought, well, you know what? Let me do a little research on this lipoma thing. Let me find out what other people are doing to uh, get to the root of the problem holistically. Like what, what would be the best way to, to, to tackle this issue, but in a natural way? And you know, it's like, I guess it's no different than if you had cancer, if you had an illness or an ailment of some kind, you know, what would you do as a human being, right? And I've always been an advocate of trying to eat right. Like I, 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 I'm not always great at it, but I do try very hard to not eat late and not put a lot of junk in my body and, and, and just try to eat right. Why can't we do this for a dog? So I started to look at the food that I was giving them. And the food that I was giving him was rated fairly high, okay? Just like a lot of the high quality, supposedly high quality foods that you buy for so much money are, 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 are being given to your dog, right? And I was giving him this stuff and I think it was called, and this is just my experience with the food, okay? It's not, I'm not saying that this food wouldn't work for any other dog. It's just, this is just with my dog and my experience. Um, and I was giving him this food for, you know, a couple years. And, and so I decided I'm not going to give it to him anymore. I'm not going to give him the dog milk bones. I'm not going to give him the, 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 the so-called high quality food that I've been buying from the, from the store shelves. From now on, I'm going to feed my dog the way that I would feed myself if I wanted to get in shape or if I wanted to feel cleaner inside maybe get a lot more slimmer, uh, uh, fix some of the ailments or, or help cure some of the issues that I had going on, right? Why not? Why not give him the foods that I would give myself, but that's good for a dog as well? So I, I, you know, I delved into a little more research and I learned that um, there are a lot of these simple 
uh, I think they're simple carbohydrates that we get that these dogs tend to eat that come from dog food that aren't necessarily good like wheat and barley and stuff like that um, a lot of starches these are all fillers that they even put in natural like supposedly great dog food uh, or some great dog food uh, that that are, that's not necessarily good for your dog so then I said okay I'm just gonna start feeding him things like fresh turkey um, breasted chicken um, vegetables right the way I would eat clean if I was getting into getting into shape for you know a, a marathon or whatever I'm gonna start giving them that and I'm gonna find out if I can give them these things so I would go online and I'd research okay can I give my dog green peppers yes you can give your dog green peppers in this amount and then watch them can I give my dog lentils can I give my dog uh, what is it uh, broccoli cucumber anything like that can I give them all these things T to my surprise a lot of those items that we eat as humans we can give to an animal if prepared properly, right? So let me take you over here and show you what exactly I've been giving my dog, okay? All right, so this right here is um, what I give him once a day. Now you can change this up. It doesn't have to be the same every day, but he eats once a day. And another thing I want to mention is when you look at the when you look on the back of your dog's uh, on the back of his uh, dog food, uh, the back of the bag of, of his dog food, and you see the daily allowance that's recommended for your size dog, I'm just gonna say this. Don't believe it. Okay, I'm just saying this, all right? My dog's 115 pounds. He doesn't look like he's starving when I give him one meal a day, one good sized meal a day that burns properly in his, in his body, all right? And, and if you go, if, if I had fed my dog the daily allowance that the bag recommended, he'd be a balloon, like literally. Um, you could probably do that if you're out there running with your dog every day, the way you're supposed to be running, but let's be honest, we don't all have the time to walk our dogs, right? So, and, 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 and give them the exercise that they, they actually need. But exercise and a balanced diet is really what helps. And the, and, and the truth of it is, even as humans, we don't need that much food, you know? Like, like literally, we could probably live off one good meal a day, like just one, but we're, as, as, as Americans, everything is in excess, right? We, we eat more meals in a day than we, than we should. We drink more than we should. You know, everything is, is excessive. So, aside from all of that, this is what I give him. <coughs> <coughs> if you look at the vegetables, I do things like cauliflower, um, cucumber. Um, I have some... Uh, Ooh, what is this called? <laughs> I can't remember now. Uh, carrots, green pepper, yellow pepper. You don't have to give them all these items, but the more color you have for your dog, I really feel the better. Um, you have, uh, oh my God, celery. All right, got a little bit of celery in there. Uh, and you know, I think, I think that's it. There might be a couple other items in there, but I can't quite point them out. But anyway, so I, 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 take, I take this and I prepare his food for the week. So I'll have like turkey, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go buy and buy those, those big blocks of turkey at Costco and I'll, and I'll do maybe half a block of turkey, right? And then I'll get some lentil beans, I'll cook that, maybe about a quarter, quarter cup of lentil beans. Um, you got some cucumbers over here, I give him some of that. And then obviously, like I said, his, his vegetables, all right? And then later, when he gets hungry or you think he looks hungry and he's searching around the kitchen, you give him a peeled apple. You peel off the skin. Well, my dog likes it this way. I peel off the skin and I cut it in chunks and then I give, in chunks and I give him the apple, right? So he's eating that. So this is basically what he gets from day one, like once a day, all right? So I tried this 10 days ago and his lump went from huge to almost non-existent, all right? You don't have, I mean, I wish I had taken 
second here. I wish that I had taken a before and after as to exactly what was going on and how it was healing. But I had went out of town for a few days and um, you just have to take my word for it that since I've been feeding him this way, his lipoma has shrunk exponentially. Like to almost, like I said, being becoming non-existent. Charlie, come here. Let me show you my dog, Charlie. Charlie! Come here, boy. All right, guys, this is Charlie. Now over here is where the lump was, like right here. Now he still has a little bit and I can feel it, like right in this area, but it was like, like really, like way out to here, all right? It was way out to there, let me see here. And he's been a lot more energetic because of it. Um, um, and like I said, I, it's almost gone, guys. It's almost gone, you know? And, and this is all because I changed his diet, you know? Um, let me fix this here. Sorry. So I, I I would say I would say to you guys, what, I better take this off. Okay. Sorry. So I I would say to you guys, you know, if if your dog has lipoma, and you're taking him to the doctor, and you're getting it surgically removed all the time or you don't want to get it surgically removed. You stand nothing to lose by trying this, by giving him a holistic diet that's healthy and that and that something you know that'll give him energy and also, you know, slim him down a little bit and at the same time maybe fix the problem the the, the lipoma issue that you're going through with him. You just don't know. It's it's a small investment. And again, I don't feed my dog like three, four, five meals a day. I feed him one meal a day. And he didn't look like he was starving, right? He's a big dog. So, I mean, he waits patiently the whole day. You know, he waits the whole day patiently. He plays on and off. And then when it's time to eat, he eats the one meal and he's content. He's good to go. So, you know, I also want to say this. I am not a doctor. And you know this, right? Because I'm not claiming that I am. But... Sometimes I hear vets talk about what they can do for your dog and I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'm just saying try something different. Try something like if you had a choice between opening up your body to get a tumor out or changing your diet to a specific uh, recipe and you knew that by changing your diet would shrink that tumor, which would you choose? Would you choose getting the tumor out surgically only to go back to your old ways and then, and then maybe get the same tumor back in the same spot? Or would you go to get to the root of the problem, which would be to change your food intake, change your diet, and, and, and try to heal yourself that way? That's all I'm saying. If you, <clears throat> if you want to try this on your dog, I would highly recommend it. And, but if you don't, then that's up to you, you know? I mean, that's... It, I mean, I'm sure if your dog had a voice in the, a, a voice in the matter, he might say, "Hey, I want to eat better. Don't take me to some doctor and open me up." So just try it out. That's all I would say. Um, anyway, guys, that's all I'm, I'm I'm here to say. And 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 again, I, I'm not a doctor. You know, I'm you know I'm, I'm just putting it out there now. I'm just telling you what I did for my dog Charlie, and that it's working. It's actually working. I changed his food, and and that's all I had to do. Good luck. Bye.